What's up, guys? It's KB. Make sure you subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Click the bell icon down below so you don't miss a single video from us. And thanks for tuning in to another video from Underground Sports Philadelphia. Now let's get into it. Philadelphia, baby. You're going to love it. Best sports fans in the world. Actually the worst, but that's what makes them the best. What is going on, everybody? Welcome in to episode number 499 of Underground Sports Philadelphia. It's an Eagles postseason edition of Underground Sports Philadelphia. It's an NFL playoffs edition. And it's KB coming at you from Underground Studios. And as he's been doing since mid-football season, and it's been a joy uh, on these, you know, start the week off episodes of the pod, all the way from the Pitts Cave, the people's champ, host with the most, Mr. Patty Pitts. Kyle, I'm feeling I'm feeling extra great today, so I decided to go double belts. Not only I was gonna say, what what belt did you win this weekend to be double belting? You look well, like Lane it, Johnson right now. I know. Well, so this one is the Gillette Gazette, where I'm the Patriots, you know, ch peeps champ, obviously. And then this is this actually is the People's Championship that I got when I was four. And I'm like, well, I'm the champ of the peeps. This is the People's Championship. Might as well just bring it out for the off season and go double belts because I'm feeling that awesome after the weekend and feeling that great heading in the new year. And uh, when you get up at five thirty every morning and I slept till nine. Five thirty what? What? <laughs> Waking me up, it's dark out. What? It's just can't oh, wake God. up. Wake me up you inside. So right. And you just you start your day. It just so I'm feeling like a double champ and uh, my power rankings definitely uh, show that. And it was great. It was great weekend for football. Great weekend of football uh, outside of the incessant <laughs> Burger King commercial. <laughs> whopper, 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 bacon, whopper. <laughs> Dude, when we sent that in our group chat today, when I was finding all those memes this morning, that just Yo. kept popping up on my timeline. Yo. And DJ had no idea what the commercial was. That blew my mind. I was like, how has this man been like safe haven from that commercial? Is it? I'm kind of jealous. It comes on every NLL broadcast that we watch, too, so I'm stunned he has not seen that. That's what I'm shocked about. I, I got the little preview to it where I was seeing it before, and then I'm like, oh, I haven't seen it really. And then now with the influx of it we've seen on social, and the fact that he hasn't seen it yet is just... Fries, drink, and nuggets. <laughs> whopper, whopper, chicken, whopper. I just want a fucking whopper. <laughs> like... <laughs> It's so, and I saw a video of a uh, Vikings fan, which they already are just a sad group of people to begin rest with. Rest in piss, bozos. Really, rest in pits. And they are showing a, a, the commercial, and it just pans over to the dad that's just sitting with his hands in his like face, just having to witness the most insane show. like oh it was awesome it was so incredible. i love it i love it we're gonna get into the nfl playoffs we're gonna get into this eagles game we're gonna talk a little philadelphia wings too uh because nice. they've got a nice little game coming up this saturday as well and i have a i have a declaration for our people uh know. we're gonna dive into the sixers a couple phillies uh minor league reports here as well and uh obviously we got pitts power rankings brought to you by our friends over at trophy smack uh, we'll get into that later in the show, but make sure you guys are following us on the socials at underground PHI, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook.com slash underground sports PHI. Follow Pitts on Twitter at Pat underscore Pitts and on Instagram at Pitsy35. You can follow me on Twitter at KBIZZL311 and on Instagram at KBIZZLE11. Uh, subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Leave a five-star review. It really does mean a lot. It helps the show continue to grow, gets more eyeballs on the show, gets us on the charts, and that's where we want to be. Uh, so make sure you subscribe to the podcast feed on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Share it with your friends. Uh, and you can play with the algorithm with uh, audio podcasts too. If you subscribe and unsubscribe and resubscribe, it, mess, it's, it acts like a new subscriber every single time. So you can do that too. But just make sure if you do that, you don't forget to fully subscribe you gotta, again. You uh, got to follow through. Yeah. 
And then, of course, subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. That's where you get full video episodes of all of our podcasts on the network, live streams, original content, shorts. Our YouTube shorts been banging a little bit lately. YouTube shorts, they're coming all 2023. So uh, go subscribe to the YouTube channel right now, everybody, as we are on that road to 1,000 subscribers. We are at 357 Okay. I just refresh. We were at 358. Somebody unsubscribed. I will find you, and I will make you resubscribe. (laughs) We will find you. Or we'll at least get Liam Neeson on it. We have a certain set of skills that will make you resubscribe. Uh, But we're at 357. Help us get to 1,000. That's the goal. So we can monetize the channel, help bring you guys even better content, and get that much closer to Underground being our full-time jobs. To the dream. To the dream. Get Pitsy off the fish farm. Dude, I, as much as I do like it so far, yeah. Uh, let's he doesn't want to be there his entire life. Let's no. put it that way. No, I want to entertain the people, not the uh, amphibians. So so go subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Underground Sports Philadelphia. And make sure you guys get your merch from our friends at PHI Apparel Company. They're the best in the game. Uh, they're our exclusive merch partners. And uh, there's no doubt in our minds you're going to stand out in the crowd uh, at the link, Xfinity Live, the Wells Fargo Center, Subaru Park when the Union get rolling next month, or, you know, baseball season, Citizens Bank Park as well. You're going to stand out in the crowd in your merch from PHI Apparel Company, especially if you're wearing that Underground Sports Philadelphia merch, which our hoodies are live, and they are fire. fire. Absolute fire. Fire. Uh, go get your hoodies. Go get your shirts. Get your merch. Rep us. There's people repping us across the whole entire country. So go get your merch. Stand out in the crowd. Use our code UNDERGROUND so they know that you're coming from us. That's how they know. Use the code UNDERGROUND for 10% off your order on any order at phiapparel.co. That's phiapparel.co. Use code UNDERGROUND. 10% off your order. Piss, let's get into the NFL playoffs. It was a it was a doozy of a weekend. We still got one more game as we record this on Monday afternoon tonight with uh, the Buckos and the old Dallas Cowboys. Um, but we don't care about the Cowboys. We don't care about that game right now because it doesn't affect no. the birds just yet. Uh, but recapping the NFL playoffs, it was quite the weekend. And, uh, you know, not too much parity, I would say, went down. Uh, outside of a, a couple games here and there, some big comebacks, uh, especially that Saturday night game. But the 49ers handle business against the Seahawks 41 to 23. Dougie P, Dougie Bro. P, go get some ice cream. Bro. He, uh, he executes a flawless coaching job. Trevor Lawrence looked phenomenal in the comeback effort, didn't look great early on, but did no, the thing was- to, to put the team on his back. Jags win 31 30. Uh, Bills hold on to beat the Dolphins 34 to 31 and the Giants hit the Vikings with the biggest L, uh, 31 to 24. And then the Bengals, Sam Hubbard runs them to victory 24 to 17 over the Ravens. Every top seed outside of the Vikings win, uh, this weekend and 49 ers Seahawks doesn't interest me at all. Very bo- that was the most boring game of them all. After yeah, halftime, you know, nothing doing agree. there. Everything else, one score game. So that's great for, you know, optics. Can we talk about though with this Jaguars Chargers game? Not only a brilliant performance by Dougie P, just putting his big old balls on the table and saying we're going for two, but the most asleep at the wheel broadcast. Oh, dude, this was like... Let's talk about this. From, from, oh, absolutely. From two, from two pals who went to school for journalism, who mm-hmm. have gotten into the broadcast game, can appreciate a good moment from a broadcaster. Great moment, yes. What a horrific performance. Dude, it really felt like Al Michaels could not have cared less and that oh. he was pissed he was missing bedtime. Like, it, really, it really felt like he just was disappointed with the outcome even he might not have been i don't know but like you're a a legend and i mean hall of famer in the broadcasting realm you have to show a little bit 
of excitement because the oh. Jaguars just won a playoff game for the first time in I since 2017. Of, since 2017, since that great season, and you know Jaguars fans have been waiting for this moment, and not only a win, but the comeback. A 27 how, point comeback. It, like you need to be all hands on deck. Excitement is pretty much waiting to burst out of you, and you're just like, and the chart. Oh, there's a flag on the play. As the players like, come running out on like, the field. Yeah, like, like you know what this broadcast was missing in typical Jaguars fashion because I feel like he calls a lot of Jaguars games on CBS. I Gus Eagle? Johnson. Oh, tomato potato, yeah. Gus Johnson calling this game would have been incredible. Like, get, why Why are Gus Johnson and Aqib Tlaib not calling games on a regular basis? That broadcast duo, when they're in the booth together, is some of the best broadcasting we get. Like, it's fantastic. It's like Gus Johnson, Aqib Tlaib, Kevin Burkhart, and Greg Olson are great together. Like well, Greg Olson has really done a 180 awesome. with me this year. He's really incredible in the booth. He's great. Um, but Gus, imagine Gus Johnson caling that game. Oh man! That Whoever the, I'm, I'm blanking on who the Jaguars kicker is right now. I'm gonna pull it up here. But like, imagine Gus Johnson, like full blown, full send, Riley Patterson. Yeah, Patterson like, sends it through the uprights, and the Jaguars win. What a comeback! Like, why not? Why can't we do Gus that? Gus Johnson would have been unbelievable. Calling all those touchdowns back to back to back to back. Like, come on. You would have built that game up so much that you would have had to tune in. Lawrence, down the sideline. And he hits. And Kirk, touchdown. Like, dude, I can just picture it in my mind. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Like, he's so – I love Gus Johnson. He's incredible, dude. Dude, you he's know what would be – like, it won't happen because they're both – I'm pretty sure both uh, play-by-play -play guys, but imagine a booth Gus Johnson and Mike Breen. That'd be loud. That would be a very loud. Booth. Remember the the punt return Jamal Agnew had either last year or this year? Yeah. Or this year? Agnew down the sideline, <laughs> bang! You get to the end zone, Mike Breen just comes out of a Nickelodeon slime cannon and just bang! <laughs> Dude, also, where was the Nickelodeon broadcast this year? Okay. Hear me out. I would have rather the little kid and Nate Burleson in the Dude, booth they're over. great. They're a great duo. Yeah, that's that's not me trying to be funny. That is dead serious. Like, they like are Ian really Eagle's good. son on that broadcast is great, too. Yes. No, he was really good. I was very impressed with him. He's very good. Big fan of his. Um, but, yeah, slime. horrific he broadcast in slime. an unbelievable game. Shout out Dougie P. Stoked Shout for Doug Peterson. Now we get the master versus the student. In the in the divisional round, it's Andy Reid versus Doug Peterson. Yo, okay. A storyline so, that's not being talked about enough. You're not going to hear about that. That's too good of a storyline that nobody's talking about. So, well, we're going to push it because it's damn right we are. It's our agenda. That's how we do it. That's how we can do it. It's the underground agenda. Um, shout out Mike McDaniel. Phenomenal job yeah. in that game. Like anybody bashing him for that performance yesterday, like. The Bills were up 17 nothing, And I'm happy for Bills Mafia getting that dub, you know. Uh, it's been an emotional past couple weeks for them. Big dub for them. Excited for them to move on. But Mike McDaniel did everything he could coaching-wise. Did you see him sneaking his vape? Dude, that's a dude. That's a dude. <laughs> like, like, he was sneaking it, and it's like, bro, you're an NFL coach. If anyone is coming at you for vaping on the sidelines during the playoff, dude, it's just the equivalent of the 50s where they were ripping bogues. I mean, what's his name? Kent, um, oh, the Chiefs quarterback, Len, 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 Len Dawson. Len Dawson. Yeah. The picture of him in the Super Bowl halftime, yeah. just crushing a brewski and ripping a nice cig in the locker room. And then he went out to go win that Super Bowl. Sometimes all you he need was is like, a little puff puff. It's okay. <laughs> like, a, like a fucking frat kid in line at the bar, like waiting. He oh. was like waiting to get into a concert before they confiscated his vape. Yes, exactly. Before but you get metal detectors. He, he had a great performance. You know, not having your starting quarterback in that game, going up against a division rival who the Bills and Dolphins have had phenomenal games against each other over the past couple of years. Um, Dolphins were, you know, a couple plays here and there away from pulling a massive upset. 
And that's where having Tua is the difference in that game. You you know, you put Tua in that situation, you know, I, I feel like the Dolphins are, are on the next round. Tua gets zero of the credit for how good he is, and I, it may just because the Patriots weren't that good this year, so I got to actually watch good football, and Tua was doing it, and I, the dude's just accurate. And as great as Skylar Thompson is, you know, is also mobile like Tua, you know, probably used it a little bit more than him. You know, he kept you in that game. It's just that experience and, you know, star power would be a better word um, that kind of kept him out of it. I mean, you're, you have Josh Allen on the other side of you. You know, Josh Allen knows how to win games in the stretch. And even though he did fumble, like, he came back, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, I want to pull up this very funny tweet from my good pal, Ben Natan, who – writes about the Eagles for uh, Bleeding Green Nation here during draft season every so often. Um, it was a very funny tweet because I, I forget who put the graphic out, so that's why I got to find it here. Mm-hmm. But you're you're probably going to laugh at this because I do also feel that this is quite true. Um, let me find it here. But while I'm looking for this, uh, the Bills, Josh Allen, I don't know what has happened over the past couple of weeks, his turnover issues. Yeah. Uh, the only explanation I could give is from when is when he has been in playoff games and I will go back to his first ever playoff game, I think against the Texans it was, it seemed like he was doing too much and he wanted to do everything and more to give the Bills the win. And as much as he has developed and – became a more disciplined quarterback in that sense it's the playoffs uh and it's the last three weeks where for them it meant a lot more than you know other teams where you know for seeding purposes yeah that we're gonna see those mistakes now and this i would say is i would not the last time but you know we're still gonna see this maybe next year and whatnot we won't but you know you're still gonna see these a lot of turnovers because he's he's trying to do too much he's trying to do too much out there uh, this was the graphic. It was from not a sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Uh, so there's four quarterbacks here, but they replace something from another quarterback that's in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So it was uh, which it was who you got? Josh Allen with Brock Purdy's weapons. Okay. Joe Burrow with Lamar Jackson's speed. Okay. Justin Herbert with Justin Fields' elusiveness. So not every quarterback in the playoffs here, but. Yeah, but yeah. <clears throat> or Jalen Hurts with Tua Tugavailoa's accuracy. And I will, my, take my good friend Ben Natan quote tweeted and said, why did you make Jalen Hurts worse? Because <laughs> I agree. I think Jalen Hurts is a more accurate passer than Tua. Oh, I, I don't, yeah. I don't think Tua is the most accurate quarterback in the world, but I think he is one of the they most. Made, they made Jalen worse. <laughs> every did, other, every other quarterback there arguably gets better. Dude, I would take Josh Allen with Purdy's weapons in a heartbeat. Josh Allen with Debo, Brandon Ayuk, and George Kittle. As much as I'm not the And Christian McCaffrey. Oh, I forgot. Yo, you just add a run. Because I was thinking about that like when they when they said Allen with Purdy's weapons, and I was like, Josh Allen has Gabe Davis, he's got Stephon Diggs. Like he's got he's got weapons. And then I realized Christian McCaffrey's in San Francisco and the like or the Bills don't have a running back. They don't have end run, any run game. Josh Allen leads the team in touchdowns. I also think Daw- Dawson Knox is criminally underrated. Oh, I, I would agree with that. Absolutely, he's criminally underrated. But it's I like you can go toe-to-toe like with all the weapons that they both have, pretty much. And then when you go running back, it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Um, Yeah, I think it goes... Honestly, I think it goes Herbert with Fields' elusiveness, number one. Because that offensive line is horrific with the chargers so you have herbert a little elusiveness to escape in the pocket move around a little bit better than he does that's unreal plus he's got the weapons you know arguably just as good as san francisco Mm -hmm. and then uh i go josh allen with purdy's weapons then joe burrow with lamar speed because he doesn't really need it he doesn't need it his arm has all this it'll help but it doesn't really need it and then the last one because i think jalen hurts is a much more accurate passer than Tua. Yeah, and I would say has a better arm than Tua in general. Yeah, hundred percent. So I just I had to had to chuckle at that again. Um, 
the Vikings, just absolute frauds. Complete Bro, frauds. I've been saying this since day one, and I said that the Lions are the best team in the NFC North. And, you know, when you say that in these streets of New England, you're going to get laughed at because everyone you're, just thinks You're going to get a whole lot of what? A lot of what's and a lot of like, you, you fucking stupid kid. A lot of those. Um, <laughs> New Hampshire. The Lions, but the Lions are just better than the Vikings. I think 100%. the Lions would have put up a better fight than the Vikings. Probably win. And probably would have beat the Giants, honestly. And and I, I think I said this off, off camera was the Vikings seem like every year – they get rid of the, you know, quote unquote problem or fix it. And then it's like, well, they fix this. They're going to be a whole new team. And you see that in a way with their record. And we'll say, you know, Justin Jefferson's numbers and whatnot. But then it, this, it's the same result at the end of the season where they're getting bounced way too early in the playoffs for how good this team should be. I wonder what hasn't changed, Pitts. Oh, yeah, could you just say. Could you say an old buddy who wears number eight for the Vikings? You cut these out of the newspaper. The old coupons. Kirky oh. coupons, man. When the you lights know. come on, the stars shine bright, and he does not shine bright. No, he needs he needs Ray Bans uh, for when the light comes at him. Dude, he I He needs Tomahawk shades. <laughs> he needs Tomahawk shades, there it is. Um Bro, I just don't get I remember Kyle uh what's his oh, Kyle Brandt. Kyle Brandt, thank you. Of Good Morning Football made an early, you know, prediction this year that Kirk Cousins was MVP. <laughs> and he was you know, he was playing well in the beginning, but you you think about it and dude, Justin Jefferson bails him out so much. Stephon yeah. Diggs bailed him out so much. Thielen bails him out. Thielen con consistently bails him out still. Where even Osborne has bailed him out. Oh, KJ Osborne, talk about underutilized or underappreciated. It's KJ Osborne. But that's the difference where the the receiver shouldn't be bailing out the quarterback. It should be the other way around to a successful team. Or it and should be, you know, some sort of even keel split. Here and there. Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, I saw a funny tweet today too. It's like, you know, Honestly, the the Vikings trading for TJ Hawkinson is such a great move. Uh, they're going to be a lethal duo for years to come. It's like, guys, he's going to get paid a hefty amount of money on that option that the Vikings are going to be forced to pick up. You have, to, and then he's yeah. a free agent. He's he's just as likely to be on the Lions again than he is the Vikings after twenty twenty four. That would make sense. I didn't even think of it like that. You know, I, I still think it's a good move for the Vikings to have him. Because they, they, but the funny thing is, is like they made an all-in move and didn't get out of the first round. Yeah, and that's I don't know. It was like one of those things that everyone was like, "Oh my god, the Vikings are pushing all their chips into the middle. They're going for it." Mm -hmm. Well, when your quarterback fucking stinks, going for it doesn't make sense, guys. Look yeah. at the moves the Eagles made in the off season. Just as an example, Great from our move. point of view. Great moves. You had the quarterback in place, and you just need to put better weapons around him. The Vikings don't have a quarterback in place. With all those weapons, Kirk Coupon still can't deliver. You like that? If you are the Vikings, do you make an offer for Jimmy Garoppolo this offseason? Probably not, because Jimmy G is uh, hes a free agent, right? I'm saying an offer to Jimmy G, yeah. Oh, uh, well, what's Kirk's contract? Yeah, Jimmy G's a free agent. That's what I mean is that I feel that Jimmy Garoppolo would be a better quarterback for that team oh, than Kirk Cousins. Oh, a thousand Kirk. percent. But do the Vikings know that? And, like, the thing with Kirk Cousins, too, is, is like, he gets trotted out there like this darling child, this up-and-coming phenom. Guys, he's going to be 35 next season. Yeah. He's not this young gun, you know, hitting his prime quarterback. He's no, been he's in not. the league since 2012. Like, yeah. he's he's not this new phenom. He is, he is just a middle-of-the-road average quarterback from Barrington, Illinois. Ugh. I don't know. It just sounds like a weird time to me. I don't you know, know he's, he's not that great. Um, 
I want to look up his contract because obviously it's all fully guaranteed too, and that's where the Vikings have also that's where uh, he screwed up. shot themselves in the that's foot. You don't give Kirk Cousins a fully guaranteed contract like that. Yeah, co- coupons isn't going anywhere. He's got a dead cap value of almost forty nine million. Oh my uh, god! And he's got oh a cap my... hit of thirty six point two five million. See these? See these titles around my around my neck? Priceless. Um, yeah, these are what you get when you make smart moves, and the Vikings are not going to see any resemblance to this for a while because of yeah. that type of move. That's terrible. That's yeah. terrible. That's the thing with the Vikings. The Vikings will not go anywhere until Kirk Coupons is no longer their quarterback. Just saying. And even then, you don't know because yeah, you don't know. by that time it happens, who knows if Justin Jefferson's still on the team? Who knows if, you know, Adam Thielen's still there? Who knows if Osborne's still there? Mm-hmm. Dalvin Cook is still in his prime. You don't know. You've wasted so much time. For those guys with yeah. Kirk coupons. Mm-hmm. Tough scene. Tough scene. Giants moving on. It's going to be Giants-Eagles in the divisional round at the link. We'll get into that in just a bit. And then the Bengals, 24-17 dub. Uh, Sam Hubbard, 98-yard fumble Legend. recovery for Legend. a touchdown. Uh, not, and, I mean, who, who runs faster, Sam or Chuba Hubbard? Bro. <laughs> That man had wheels last night. He had one He had the Mario energy. star. He was like, Dude, he actually, <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> Someone needs to edit that video quickly. together. Oh, give me give me a little bit. Yeah, that would be that that is actually exactly what happened. And the fact that the Bengals defense made a play like that, the, the Bengals defense is so underrated. Their D line is so underrated. Their D line is very good. It's so good with Hendrickson and Hubbard. I don't know. It just in that game, I knew the Ravens weren't going to win. You know, once you make the announcement, Lamar's not traveling with the team, let alone playing. And everyone, everyone blew that out of proportion though, because Lamar didn't travel last week either. Yeah, I just, it, but that's not what I'm focusing on. Uh, but everyone was yeah. trying to make it like, oh, he didn't travel with the team. Like, oh my goodness, it's like well, he didn't travel play, with the team last so, week. Yeah, he's not going to play. It's not worth the travel. Yeah. And it play out like there's yeah exactly I, I don't mind that my thing is and I, I want I want to say this comparison to you because I think you'll get a chuckle out of it but Lamar Jackson is the NFL's equivalent of Ka- Kawhi Leonard yeah in a way I if think Kawhi we, has we a don't ring. know more I don't think we know all the details to this knee injury or ankle injury whatever it is. There's definitely holding out for some reason, and also the fact that they didn't pay him this year. It's very eye-opening. Would be a good way well, I, I think a lot of people are underestimating how injured his knee is. Like he's hurt. Like people, people like we have we have this tendency with NFL players to be like, oh, just put a bandaid on it, and it was very poor taste and very poor commentary from the Fox uh, broadcast desk, you know, and I was very disappointed in Michael Vick um, for saying, oh, just slap a brace on it and you'll be fine. Like, of all people, Michael Vick should know. It's more than just a brace. Like, his knee, if he gets hit the wrong way, plants the wrong way, like, that's his ACL, his MCL, his PCL. He's done for next year. Yeah, Without a contract, you know, he can't risk that. And I think it was smart for Lamar to be like, hey, I'm going to take care of myself because not only from a football perspective, like we we, we tend to not look at football players like human beings for yes. some reason. And it's like the long term just like health factor of Lamar Jackson as the human comes into play too. Like, but he's gotta be able to walk when his career is done. Yeah. And if he gets hit the wrong way, look at RG three. That's and that's a good point that you bring up because I RG three rushed tweet. back to play in that playoff game and got oh, hurt even worse. And he even it was never the same. And he tweeted about it and said and the picture and everything about you know any anyone doubting or you know naysayers against Lamar. And that's where I put in percep put it in perspective. Where I'm like, all right, if RG3 is saying this and, you know, I obviously don't know, I'm going where, you know, they, they've proved it, you know, before. And at this point, you got to show if, if they gave him that contract, 
I'm I think I would be leaning more on the side of at least try to come back if it you know if you really cared and you could just say all right screw the pain I'm gonna win this for my team but where's the love they're showing him you know they, they didn't exactly. show him that they didn't show him that so why would he go put his body on the line for them if they didn't give him you know what he deserves as the MVP and probably the only quarterback who could have brought them to you know this relevancy over the past few years so I, i'm i'm with him i i am fully yeah, I, with I don't him. blame him sitting out whatsoever even if he's like 75 percent healthy a knee injury is nothing to like mess around with yeah it's not like a finger or a toe you know it's, what I mean? it's not it, like you know hey i have i have a bruise or or something like yeah. he's got he's got ligament damage yeah like, anything inside there you can't mess with it just blows my mind how we just like devalue so much of uh, just the health of, oh. especially after everything that happened with Demar Hamlin over like the last two weeks. Like, yo, yeah. Let's let's yeah. be a little kinder. Let's be a little more understanding of guys' situations with injuries. Yeah, and that's one thing that I'm very grateful of Quinnipiac. I'm not grateful for a lot from them, but this is definitely one where working with the teams rather than covering them from the media side. I grew an appreciation for them as just humans. Uh, you know, you just get to hang out with them and you, and I'm not saying outside of the party and stuff. No, like we would get lunch in the calf and we would just talk about class and stuff and they're just people. And mm -hmm. once, you once you realize that these comments about, Oh, rub some dirt on it and go back out there. You, you, you crazy. think about what you say. You think about what you say before you say it. it's crazy. Um, so, yeah, those were the games there, and now uh, it's Eagles-Giants in the divisional round. And uh, this segment's brought to you by our new partners over at Dubby. Yes, Dubby. Uh, it's the brand new way you're gonna, you guys are going to consume energy drinks. They are uh, waging a war on big energy, uh, and I'm super excited about this partnership. Uh Dubby is all about getting rid of the, like the jittery, the shakes, the crash, and I'm sure you hear that in all of these you know campaigns and stuff. Oh, there's no jitters, there's no crash. There's literally proven data here uh, from our new pals over at Dubby why you should choose them. They have a product here: zero calories, no sugar, no maltodextrin, no fillers, no artificial colors. And it's all natural caffeine coming out of Dubby. And what makes them unique, this is what makes Dubby unique, okay? Get ready for this. They spent a lot of time formulating their recipe and only included vitamins and nootropics that benefit cognitive performance. The star of the show is Neurofactor, a natural and patented ingredient that comes from high-quality, ripe coffee cherries. It has actually been shown in clinical studies to boost brain performance. And like I mentioned, there's it's sugar-free, zero calories, maltodextrin-free, and zero artificial coloring. Uh, the caffeine in Dubby, a serving, is 150 milligrams of caffeine, which is approximately two cups of coffee. And you may notice that you don't feel as anxious or wired with Dubby. That's because the formula hits zero sugar, the neuro factor, and it delivers energy and focus with zero jitters. So, go, guys, I'm very excited about this. I'm excited to get my own. We're going to have it in the studio. We're going to have it at the Pitts Cave. We're going to have it all over the place. Need to have go get place. Dubby. We're, we're, we're joining them in the war on big energy. Uh, so go to dubby.gg. Get your stuff. They've, they've got it in the tubs and everything. It's super affordable. Pitts, you were not a sponsor here, but you were a uh, you know supplement store uh purchase oh yeah yeah i, I go and it's it's comparable if not cheaper than you know oh, yeah. pre-workout and stuff like that and you're getting energy yeah. it's all natural uh and it's good for you like that's the the big thing that you know we were looking at here they're very environmental environmentally conscious you know they have a shaker that if you purchase it they plant a tree which i love big fan awesome. of that yeah. um yeah, so you guys go to w.gg and when you get everything in your cart use our code underground you get 10 percent off at w.gg uh very excited for them to uh be our our newest partner here in 2023 so w.gg go shop 
And when you go to check out, use code UNDERGROUND for 10% off your order. Uh, go get your W. I'm excited to get mine. Like, I'm so very pumped. excited. Yeah. So I get that check. Let's go. Eagles, Giants, divisional round. It's 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 round it's three. Awesome. Round three. It's tough to beat a team three times. I'll, I'll tough give to beat a team three times. I'll put it there. Um, but man, you, you couldn't have scripted a better potential divisional round matchup for the Eagles going into the playoffs. I mean, wow. Eagles Giants is just it's it's one of my favorite rivalries. I enjoy it more than Eagles Cowboys sometimes because like at least Giants fans know football uh and can have an intelligent conversation about football with you yeah. unlike some cowboys fans um i think this is gonna be a very fun game like it's gonna be yeah i agree this, this stems all the way back to you know miracle at the meadowlands technically number three not number two it was three but my quick said number two uh on the broadcast um you know with deshaun jackson running the punt that back was three and, yeah it was technically number three there was the original miracle at the meadowlands then in the early 2000s, Brian Westbrook had a game-winning score, which was Miracle at the Meadowlands number two. Oh, I didn't know that one. And then okay. Deshaun was technically number three. Oh, interesting. Um, I'm learning, learning new things every day. And then obviously 2020, that final game of the season, all the Giants players on Twitter losing their mind. Why is Jalen Hurts not on the field? Where's Jalen Hurts? And effectively, you know, Doug Peterson gets fired and D Jalen Hurts becomes our starting quarterback and – uh, you know, there's the the Giants fans smack talking Devontae Smith, saying he's he's so unhappy playing in Philadelphia. And then whenever Devontae plays against the Eagles, he goes off. New and Giants. then we've got the King of New York, the Giant Killer, Dude. Boston Scott. I, we get to, to do we get to do it one more time this year. You have to put anytime touchdown for Boston Scott. Like you just have to do responsibly it. bet the mortgage on you Boston have Scott to anytime touchdown. Game. Like the man, he has more touchdowns against the Giants than games against them. Yeah. So, wow, that is a stat. No, I'm excited for this game because the Giants are a good team this year. Brian Dable gets a lot, or should get all of the credit uh, for their turnaround. Eagles, my my gut is it's just like it's not. I just don't see a. It's gonna be a good game. That's what I'm gonna say. It's gonna be Wayne a good Johnson's game. back. Lane Johnson's back. I Curry feel like Johnson's you've come back. around on Lane Johnson. For everybody I, for everybody at home, Pitts was not the biggest Lane Johnson guy after the Eagles won the Super Bowl back in 2018. Well, because it's, it's fun to win championships. We just do it differently than you guys. You know, and why we do it differently is why we have six and not one. But I feel like you've right? made a full turn. It, you know, it, I would say a turn, but, you know, I, I let bygones be bygones. From, from his performance on the field – being and, one of the most dominant right tackles in NFL history to a Christmas album. That's what it is. To that's walking is. around with a WWE belt pandering to you. Dude, yeah, you made a Christmas album and you got a WWE belt. Like, you really want me to be your friend. He and cut a phenomenal doing. promo. And he even cut the promo. Like, dude, he just, if that's what he's going to do and be my friend, I'm, I'm for it. I, I can let bygones be bygones and move on because – Dude, that Christmas album is fucking fire. It's so good. Oh, it's incredible. And that bell, too. I'm jealous. Lane's oh back. Josh Sweat working towards being back this week, yeah, which is huge for the defense. C.J. Gardner-Johnson came back the final week of the regular season. That's huge. Um, I'm just feeling really good. Like I like this matchup for the Eagles. Jalen Hurts is the better quarterback. The Eagles have better weapons. Mm -hmm. The better defense. Like... In all in all facets, they have the better coach, in my opinion. Like, not the table's bad, but I think Sirianni's a better coach. Yeah, yeah, okay. And I mean, Sirianni's proved more. Like this two years in a row, he's made the postseason. Yeah, and the leap that they made from his year one to now. Yeah, I, in my eyes, it's a coin flip of like who wins the coaching matchup. At and this point. the Eagles are at home. That's that's the huge. The event. link is going to be buzzing a saturday night rocking that place is saturday be night at the link rocking. good night the link is gonna be the place to be um i i feel very good about this matchup for the eagles i do too i i, I would i 
like this matchup compared to others that they could have had at this stage where the Giants, they're definitely a beatable team. And I'm feeling, you know, obviously the Boston Scott guaranteed touchdown, but bro, AJ Brown put, he, he is thriving for this situation. Yeah. He wants to be the guy in this situation. I don't know any Giants defensive back that could contain him in this. It game. would have been James Bradbury, but he plays for That's the thing. Oh, but he he flew himself all oh, the way. Oh, but, but the Giants cut him and let him go sign wherever? That was the dumbest thing. Like, that was so dumb. Did you see A.J. Brown's tweet after it was uh, pretty much locked in that the Eagles would be playing the Giants? I did not see that. He, uh, he tweeted... Oh, I guess he deleted it. But a bunch of the Eagles were tweeting, oh, let's run it back, like, go time. Like, everyone's hyped that it's Eagles-Giants. Oh, it's everyone it's wins. In that. Divisional games in the postseason are always great. Like, we got a bunch of them this past weekend with 49ers, Seahawks, Bills, Dolphins, Bengals, Ravens. That's always fun. And now we get Eagles-Giants. Uh... In the next round, divisional round, we also get a rematch of Bengals Bills. Well, a rematch that never happened. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Um and then Jaguars Chiefs. Jaguars then, Chiefs is gonna be a hell of a game. 49ers versus either Bucks or Cowboys. I would I yeah, I just don't want to see the Cowboys win. I'm sorry. No. I just I have no I have no desire to see the Cowboys. It's gonna be great that Dak season started. And ends in Tampa. Yes. That is very poetic. Very storybook. Um, But also, for the people out there, you know, Eagles games at 8.15 on Saturday night. Philadelphia Wings. Obviously, we are, you know, very close with the Wings. And, you know, they're part of our operation here. They were going to have a home game at 7 o'clock on Saturday. It's now been moved to 1 o'clock on Saturday. I am encouraging Everybody out there who is going to either tailgate, go to the game, or both, to go a little bit early. Parking lots are opening pits for the Wings game at 8 a.m. for a 1 o'clock game. Go to the Wings game. It's $20 for a ticket. This is not an ad either from the Wings. This is just me encouraging everybody to get a great pregame in and just go see an enjoyable product as well. Uh Tickets for the Wings game are 20 bucks. Parking with a Wings ticket is going to be $25. And it's 215 day. $2 soft pretzels, $1 hot dogs, $5 beers. Wide. Like that's just that's just stupid. You you would be stupid to not take advantage of that. Go pregame at the Wings game. Go enjoy a phenomenal team also doing really well in our city. And then go to the lots right after go tailgate, and then go to the game or go to Xfinity. You get two games in one. Yeah, this – this if if I did not have to work at the pier on Saturday, I, I would be contemplating this because it's too – It's, it's too good such of a good deal. If you were a sports fan, like this is a dream – if Philly sports fan, nonetheless, you go to a lacrosse game inside, get the juices going, nice warm-up. You're going to watch some BS sport on TV anyways. Why not do it with, you know – your fellow Philadelphians, yeah. your fellow brothers. You're going to be down at the lots anyway. Why not go cool. inside and not freeze your asses off? Yeah. And go watch that? another physical sporting event to get ready for the big dogs. Get go to the Wings game. It's going to be dude. fun. We had, we had over 10,000 people on Saturday. That's insane. That is That's wild. That's Go to the Wings game. I, I highly encourage it, especially if you've never been. Coach Paul Day, GM and head coach of the Wings, was on the pod for OTP last week. He said you basically take the the environment of a Sixers and Flyers game and put an Eagles tailgate into it. That's a Wings game. Sounds good. You get two Eagles tailgates in one at that point. What? Wide. What? Two tailgates wide. More beer. Wide. And you get Kenny's. Our guy's Kenny's. Yes. Big Kenny's at the Wells Fargo Center. Dude. Kenwood Beer. It's our it's our official beer of Underground Sports Philadelphia. And it looks like they might be making their way into New Jersey. 
NJ2023, Big Kenny's, Kenny's, KenwoodBeer.com. Use the all-new and improved Kenny Tracker. See who's got Kenwood on tap in the Philadelphia area. See who's got it available. And when you go to the Wells Fargo Center, get your Big Kenny's as well. Got to be 21 or older to do so. And, of course, please drink responsibly. Um, Pits, but I think without any further ado, let's get into uh, that time where... I give you the stage. Oh, I love getting the stage. Cut this here. I'm going to give you the screen. And uh, it is time for Pat Pitts' Power Rankings, brought to you by Trophy Smack. You guys can go and upgrade your fantasy smack talk. They've got belts. They've got rings. They've got trophies. They've got metal wall art. You name it, they've got it. TrophySmack.com slash underground. Start upgrading your fantasy smack talk today. TrophySmack.com slash underground. Trophy Smack. Upgrade that fantasy smack talk. It's Pat Pitts is going into the divisional round power rankings. Brought to you by Trophy Smack Pitts. Let's talk to the people. Let's talk to the people. It's the champ of the peeps, Patty Pitts here. Renaissance made always thinks he can. And he does in this week's power rankings. Heading into the divisional round. Number 10, Geno Smith. Listen, he played a hell of a game, or is the least tried his best, and he worked his way into getting himself a contract next year. And that's all you could ask for out of uh, one year replacement quarterback. Number nine, Skylar Thompson. Dude, the rookie got thrown into a situation that no one could prepare for, and he almost did the job. He almost did it, uh, got them there, but experience matters, and that's where Josh Allen defeats him so purdy is in at number eight listen brock purdy is the sensation going on around the league if this man ends up in the super bowl the amount of brady comparisons are going to be nauseating so i just get ready for that a little uh pitch precursor number seven jk dobbins i just love jk dobbins for the sheer fact that he called out his entire team like well if lamar was playing we would have won you know tyler shouldn't have been in that situation situation where he held the ball over to have it knocked out, should have given it to me. He wants the smoke. He wants the accountability. They didn't give it to him, but I love the uh, standard he's holding himself to. Number six, Justin Herbert. I feel so bad for Justin Herbert because this man should be a future Super Bowl MVP, but Brendan Staley is just keeping that chain on him, and someone's got to release him or fire him, and the NFL Network even said they're not going to. So it looks like the Chargers are going to be sticking stuck in quicksand. Dougie P, someone who is just lighting it on fire at number five. I love this man re reviving the Jaguars as a franchise. And I would not be surprised if they beat the Chiefs this week. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not going to say it happens, but I wouldn't be surprised. And number four, Sam Hubbard. Dude, you legitimately picked up that ball like it was a Mario star and just ran your way all down the rainbow road to the score. It was incredible. And giving your team the win, that was a massive, massive play to uh, give him the lead. Danny Jones at three, only put him there because uh, he is the only quarterback in NFL history to have 400 yards, three touchdowns, and something else in postseason history. And this is a man that everyone wants kicked to the curb including myself. Number two, the 49ers. I don't think anyone's beating the 49ers uh, who played this week, okay? Who played last week. I don't think anyone who played last week could beat the 49ers, and that's why they're going to be at my number two and not one because the people, you, the peeps out there, are number one because you enjoyed this week's game slate. You enjoyed it so well. You're talking about it on the airwaves, and then you are going to come back next week for more with Eagles, Giants, Chiefs, Jaguars, and a whole other slate of games that we have to cherish because the season is nearly coming to a close. And that are the champs power ranking. And there it is, everybody. That is the Pat Pitts going into the divisional round power rankings brought to you by our friends at Trophy Smack. From 1 to 10, it's the people, 49ers. Danny Dimes, Sam Hubbard, Dougie P, Justin Herbert, J.K. Dobbins, Brock Purdy, Skylar Thompson, and Geno Smith. Only one team making it on the rankings this week. Now, so. Only one team out of the teams I saw this week that deserves to fully make it. So there you go. That's the power rankings. Eagles-Giants is going to be a doozy. We're going to dive into a whole hell of a lot more in detail with it with Eagles enemies this week. And on the Wednesday episode of the pod. But Pitts, let's get into uh, 
some NBA talk. And it's brought to you by our friends over at Tomahawk Shades, the best small batch eyewear in the game. You guys can go to TomahawkShades.com, get your blue light glasses, sunglasses, your snow goggles, all that good stuff. It's available at TomahawkShades.com. Prescription lenses also available. And uh, when you go to check out, use our code USP for 25% off your order at TomahawkShades.com. Pits the Sixers, they're streaking a little bit. Two back-to-back wins by one point out on this West Coast road trip that I thought was going to be, you know, a little bit difficult. Not that it's, you know, too many tough teams, but it's uh, it's a West Coast road trip nonetheless. But they beat the Jazz 118-117 to on Saturday. And then uh, on Sunday night, beat the Lakers 113-112. to Joel Embiid and James Harden's chemistry, I don't think it's been better over the past couple of weeks. That's what you need at that, though, you know, with the amount of, I would say, streakiness going on around the league with the Nets having a little hot streak and then KD going down. Um, the Bucks have been looking good. The fact the Sixers have the same record as the Bucks right now, what you told me, I mean, that, fla- that blew my mind that the Sixers would be at the four seed right now. Um, but, no, that they're – their competition they're they're looking good and i you know what i know the jazz and lakers aren't playing as well as they should this season but they're still good teams you know historically good organizations where they're gonna give you a good game i mean joel and b big play on westbrook to stop that from going in so yeah anytime you can get a couple wins on the west coast that's always a big moral win for your team yeah and i i laughed at the lakers coach saying that he would take a Westbrook on Embiid matchup any day of the week and twice on Sundays. Like, buddy, that hasn't been the case since, like, 2015, 2016. Yeah, I wouldn't take Westbrook anywhere. <laughs> I really wouldn't. I would take James Harden over Westbrook at this point. It's that, so that's a, that is a full circle. I mean, Westbrook has stunk since, I don't know, 2015. He's, yeah, he's a pretty much just a mason out there. Yeah, he's not good. Uh, Sixers remaining on the road trip. They've got the Clippers tomorrow night, being Tuesday, Thursday at Portland, and then uh, Saturday against the Kings in Sacramento to round out the road trip before they come back home on Wednesday, January 25th to play the Brooklyn Nets and Ben Simmons. That'll be a good game. That'll be a good game. I'm also I, – I want your thoughts on this uh, because I've seen it all over, and I'm like, how are we giving this man credit for it? But – the night that he had the other night where he put up a respectable stat line yet didn't put the ball in the net, um, I think it's just bananas that like, – He stinks. He's not he good. He stinks on ice. Like, he's just terrible. You're washed. It's you, over. It's over. <laughs> My favorite memes. Damian Priest really said it best, man. You're washed. It's done. It's over. Like, that's basically what Ben Simmons should be doing, but – if he wants to just go out there and play supporter and then when it really matters to be on, you know, left bench, uh, then that's fine. Yeah. I don't know. It's the six. We talked about it on Wednesday night. The Sixers are that team where it's like, you know, I thought I was out and then they pulled me back in. That's the Sixers. So we'll see uh, this has this road trip continues and, you know, how this season continues to unfold for them. Uh, and then little minor league uh, Phil's action. Andrew Painter, Mick Abel, uh, named to the top 10 right-handed pitching prospects from MLB Pipeline's 2023 preseason. Painter at number one, Abel at number nine. Um, I mean, it's just fun that the Phillies are, like, good. They're, you know, big-time contenders, and they have these great prospects. Yes. And both their painters ETA is potentially this year. Mm-hmm. Mick Abel 2024. Yeah. I mean, they've got they've got these young guys coming up the pipeline and to see the Phillies have two top 10 prospects at one position that is so important in baseball is just makes my heart sing. Oh yeah. No, it's awesome. It really is awesome. And the fact that you guys have a nice little Farm system coming up into the big leagues for pitching, that's massive. Um, is pitching? I, I, I want to say this, but I uh, want your opinion before I do. Would pitching be 
one of the weaker aspects of the Phillies game right now? Um, I'd say it's getting better. I mean, you look at their lineup; it's absurd. That's why, yeah, that's why. Like the lineup, I, I don't see any real like needs for improvement. But pitching, not only the Phillies, but any team really in the league, you always want to have as much pitching as possible. Yeah. Um, just because it's so difficult to to find and to develop. I mean, you look at the Phillies' top prospects right now, uh, in their system. Number one is Andrew Painter. Number three is Mick Abel. Number three, this is going to make you feel old. Our draft pick last year, Justin Crawford, the son of Carl Crawford. Okay, I'm getting older. That's tough. Uh, Red Sox legend, Carl Crawford. (laughs) Number four, right-handed pitcher, Griff McGarry. One of the best names that is an ever. Name. That is an all-time name. Uh, then it's another outfielder, Johan Rojas. And then uh, recently signed, I'm pretty sure, How You Lee, uh, second baseman. How you doing? Uh, Ethan Wilson, an outfielder, is number seven. Gabriel Rinconis Jr., another outfielder. And then Alex McFarlane and Francisco Morales, uh, both right-handed pitchers, round out the top ten. So, like, pretty balanced uh, between outfield and and then a couple infielders there, and then mostly pitching. But, like, I like that the Phillies have so many guys in their top 30 prospects that are pitchers um, because you can't have enough. Like, you you just need to find pitching, develop pitching, and whether they're meant to be starters or they are starters, and then when they get to the big leagues, they're bullpen guys. Like, if you can develop pitching, that is such an asset for your organization in Major League Baseball. Because, I mean, look at the Astros. You know, look at look at some of these teams that look at the Dodgers. You know, these teams that have just like unbelievable farm systems and can call guys up at a whim and are are ready to rock and roll the way that those two teams in particular yeah. have. And you know, you look at some of the other teams across the league that have very good pitching. Um, it's it's something that you just need to have your your director of scouting and and your farm system directors like really hone in on because it can really make or break a franchise if you have big time pitching prospects or not Mm. because everybody's always looking for pitching yeah that makes sense um so i mean i'm excited that the phillies have you know and i mean looking at the phillies top 10 prospects the oldest is Griff McGarry, Ethan Wilson, and Francisco Morales, and they're all 23. Yeah, that's that's massive. Everyone else is 22 or younger. That's still huge that 23 is your oldest. And Mick Abel is 21. Andrew Painter is 19. And those are your top two prospects. Justin Crawford, also 19. That's, that's wild. That is wild. How you, Lee, 19. How you doing? So, I mean, like... It's it's a good time to be a Phils fan. It's a good, good time, time to be a Phils fan. Um, that's all we got for you guys for this episode. Next episode, episode five hundred. No, we're gonna be rolling out some of the candidates for the Underground Sports Philadelphia Hall of Fame. Uh, we'll be talking Eagles, Giants. We'll be talking Sixers. We'll be talking. Potentially some Phil stuff if more stuff MLB wise pops off. Roger. And uh, we we're going to keep it rolling and very excited. You know, 500 episodes is crazy. It's crazy. So big thank you guys for the support uh, over the last five years. You know, we're coming up on the fit five year anniversary as well in February, less than a month away from that. Um, couldn't do it without you guys. So thank you guys for always supporting us. And uh, if you're not already, make sure you're following us on the socials at Underground PHI, Twitter, Instagram. Follow Pitts on Twitter at Pat underscore Pitts and on Instagram at Pitsy35. Follow me at KBIZZL311 on Twitter and KBIZZLE11 on Instagram. Subscribe to the podcast feed, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. We're there. Leave those five-star ratings and reviews. It does go a long way for more people finding the show. Uh, helping us continue to grow and taking this thing to the gosh darn Milky Way galaxy and beyond. And, of course, subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. It's where you get full video episodes of every podcast on our network, live streams, original content, shorts, you name it, they're there. YouTube.com slash at Underground Sports Philadelphia. 
Uh, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. I think by the end of the month we can get to four hundred. Still, I still have that goal. <laughs> we're we're forty three away. It's I think a big we ask, but I think we can get there. Uh, so be a friend, tell a friend, subscribe to the YouTube. Big thank you to our sponsors who make this show happen: Main Auto LLC, Security Twenty One Security Systems. Paul J. Gillespie Incorporated and the Dental Wellness Center of Vineland. And, of course, go get your merch at PHI Apparel Company, phiapparel.co. Use code UNDERGROUND for 10% off any and all merch, including our shirts, our hoodies. Use that code so that they know we sent you. But this has been episode number 499 of Underground Sports Philadelphia. Big Eagles week, ladies and gents. Let's strap in and get Go ready birds. for Eagles Giants. Clip it right there. Let, let's get another one of those pits. Go birds, baby. Go birds. That's music to my ears. Uh, let's get ready for a big one. And uh, for pits, I'm KB. Until next time, we are signing off. Peace.